In this video, we're going to look at the sum to infinity of a geometric series. Let's start off by looking at two different geometric series. The first one, I'm going to let it have a first term of 3 and a ratio of 2. So first term A is 3, common ratio R is 2. Second one, we will let the first term be equal to 4 and the ratio be equal to 1 half. So A is 4, R is 1 half. What I'm going to do is generate terms in this series. The first term is going to be 3, and then we add to that 3 times 2. We multiply by 2 again and add it. Multiply by 2 again and add it. Multiply by 2 again and add it, and so on and so forth. If we look at this one right here, first term is 4. Then we're going to multiply it by half and add it, which is going to give 2. Multiply by half and add it, which will give 1. Multiply by half and add it, which will be a half. Multiply by half and add it, which will be a quarter, and so on and so forth. We can see here, if we start summing these terms, we're going to get a very large number. We can say now that this particular geometric series will diverge when we sum it. So, with this one, there is no limit to the sum. So, if we got to, for example, a million, then we can add the next term. And that would keep growing and growing. The reason that's happening is here because the ratio here is 2. That ratio is greater than 1. If we look at this one right here, we've got 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a quarter. If we keep adding these fractions as they get smaller and smaller, we can say that this is going to tend to a specific value. And we call that the limit so it will be the limit of the sum. And we say that this particular series will converge. The limit of the sum is what we call the sum to infinity. The reason that's happening is because the ratio now is one half. We can say that the sum to infinity, so the sum to infinity of a geometric series with first term A and common ratio R is a over 1 minus r as long as the ratio is between negative and positive 1. That's a strict inequality. Or, if you like, the modulus of the ratio is less than 1. So this is a formula we use to find the sum to infinity of a geometric series that will converge. Let's just look at this as a practical example got a bar of chocolate here and I'm going to say that this bar of chocolate, let's say that's 240 grams. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and eat half of it. If I eat half of it, what we're going to do is get rid of this part right here. So in doing so, I've eaten 120 grams. So if I just put this here, I've had 120 what I'm now going to do is eat half of what's left. So if I now do that, let's go across there, as it's quite straightforward to see. So we're going to now have this part right here and eat this part. So that part has gone. So I've eaten 120 and then I've eaten 60. So plus 60. What I'm going to do with what's left is eat half of that. So if I look at the total amount that I've eaten now, this part is going to be 30. So this one was 120, this was 60, this now, which is just about to be eaten, is going to be 30. So we would add to that now 30. That's the total that I've eaten. If I go ahead and eat half of what's left, half of what's left, and I'll put the line just here, well, we're going to eat 15. Let's put that on here. So 15. That's just gone. So adding now 15. And then if I eat half of what's left, and again, you can see, let's put, we can put that across there. It really doesn't matter. I can do it however I want. That right there is going to be now seven and a half. So what I'm doing here is forming now a geometric series. The geometric series has first term A, which is going to be 120, and the ratio is going to be one half. So 
the more and more, and I'll just do this as I go, the more and more of these pieces that I eat, in terms of what it's adding to the total, is very little each time. So if I took the next one and ate that part, that's going to be, now what's that, 3.75, uh, so plus 3.75. So what we will end up doing is adding smaller and smaller bits such that the amount that we've eaten in total forms this sum to infinity. We will never actually reach the limit. It's just now a value that we can't exceed. We expect that value right here to be 240 grams. Quite clearly, when I'm eating tiny, tiny bits of it, it's going to add less and less. So what we can say now is that the sum to infinity is going to be equal to a over 1 minus r. So in the case of this one, it's 120 over 1 minus 1 half. 1 minus a half is going to give us a half, so it's 120 divided by 1 half, and that is going to give us the 240 we expected. You know quite clearly we're never going to get there because we're eating half of what's left. It's like cutting the piece of uh, the grain of, uh, of rice into tiny and tiny bits, but it will tend to that figure. And the reason it is, again, is because the ratio is going to be one half. So if we had a geometric series, first term three, common ratio now negative 0 0.1, we could find the sum to infinity. If we had first term 2.1 and ratio negative 3.7, we couldn't as the modulus of the ratio, or if you like now, we can say in this particular case, we fall outside the condition that the ratio must be between positive and negative one. And quite clearly, these have to be um, strict inequalities. If we had, for example, a is equal to negative 1.7 and the ratio is going to be now 0 0.65, we could look to find the sum to infinity. So there we go. That's a bit of the logic behind it. Let's now look at where this comes from. So if we go back to our idea now of the sum of n terms of a geometric series is going to be a then we'll have 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. This is what we've seen before. If I just multiply this out, what we're going to have now is a minus a multiplied by r to the n over 1 minus r. Splitting the fraction up, we can have a over 1 minus r. Then we'll have minus a r to the power of n over 1 minus r. If we just consider now this ratio right here, if we have now the modulus of a ratio, or if you like, the ratio between negative and positive 1, we can say now as, and we'll have n as n tends to positive infinity, i.e. gets very big, we can say now that r to the n will tend, uh, let's put this in, r to the n will tend to zero. So let's just think about what this is saying. If we take now 0 0.5 and we raise this to the power of 2, we're going to get a quarter. If we raise it to the power of 20, we're going to end up now with that very small number. If I wanted to raise this to the power of 200, we get something even smaller. So when the modulus of the ratio now is going to be less than 1, as this value of n gets larger and larger, we can see now that it tends to 0. Therefore, all we're left with in this sum now is the following. So what we end up with then is this scenario when n is equal here to infinity. So we can see as that's going to be 0, all we're left with now is the a over 1 minus r. So we can write now that the sum to infinity, and I'll write it out long form, is going to be equal to a, then we're going to have 1 minus r, and then we will have now, remember, n is going to be infinity, and that's going to be over 1 minus r. 
Don't need to do this necessarily. So it's A over 1 minus R minus AR. And then we have the power just there over 1 minus R. That's going to become 0. So the sum to infinity is going to be A over 1 minus R. As long as the modulus of the ratio is going to be less than 1. So that gives you some idea. In all honesty, in this unit, it's simply a case of plugging the numbers in and, and going from there. But I think it's important to get some idea of what we ha uh, what happens if we have a, a series where the sum will converge to a fixed value, uh, opposed to it diverging, where it just has no limit. So let's look at some questions. Now, the questions are generally quite underwhelming after you've seen what this is about. But I think it's important that we don't just blindly use a formula and plug it in. So the sum to infinity is going to be a over 1 minus r as long as the modulus of the ratio is less than 1. That's just saying the modulus now gives us a plus or minus that we saw with a different notation. So let's look at this one right here. a quite clearly is going to be 4. So all we're doing is finding the, the sum to infinity. We've got 2 over 4, 1 over 2, a half over 1. The ratio is going to be 1 half. So exactly what we've uh, just been looking at. So we can say now that the sum to infinity is going to be equal to a, which is 4, over 1 minus 1 half. That's going to give us now 4 over 1 half, which is going to give us 8. And if you look at that, you're thinking, well, we're already at 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus v 0 0.5. We're already at 7.5 after four terms. How on earth is that oh, never going to exceed 8? Well, if we think the next one is going to be a quarter, it's going to be 1 eighth. It's going to be now 1 sixteenth. It's going to be 1 over 32. These fractions are getting so small that the amount that we're adding, like the bar of chocolate, is so insignificant that it will tend to that value yet never, never meet it. Okay, part B. So again, we're just finding the sum to infinity. Uh, and then all we need is A and R. Well, A is going to be the negative 10. And the ratio, 2 over negative 10 is negative 1 fifth. So negative 1 fifth. And we can simply go ahead and plug these in. So we're going to get now A over 1 minus R. So sum to infinity is equal to A, which is negative 10, over 1 subtract the negative 1 fifth. So negative 10, I'm just going to write this as an exact fraction, negative 10 over, and that's going to give me 6 fifths. So negative 10 over 6 fifths. Uh, what's that going to give us an exact fraction? Negative 25 thirds. So negative 25 over 3. So that now is the sum to infinity of this one. Okay, part C, we got 2p, uh, a half, and p to the negative 4. So with this one, it needs us, we need to find the value of p first. We're not expressing this in terms of p. So what we've seen in previous videos, if this is a geometric series, a half divided by 2p will be the same as p to the negative 4 over a half. So let's find the value of p, substitute those values in, and then go ahead and find the sum to infinity. So this one's slightly harder. So we've got 1 half over 2p will be equal to p to the negative 4 which is 1 over p to the power 4 over now 1 half. So let's go ahead now and just tidy this up. What's that going to be? 1 over 4p and this is going to be uh, what are we going to have? 2 over p to the 4th. Multiplying both sides by p to the 4th and 4 that will give me p cubed is equal to 8. Cube root of 8 is 2 so p is 2. So if we now look at this particular geometric series, the first term is going to be 4. Then we're going to get now 1 half. And then we're going to get now p to the negative 4, which is going to be 1 over 16. So what we can see here, now just substituting in values, we've got a. a is going to be 4. And then the common ratio is going to be on here 1 over 8. So that's going to be 1 over 8, and we can substitute those in. So if you ask to express in terms of p, that's perfectly fine. Uh, with this one, we simply need to find the value. So the sum to infinity is going to be equal to a, which is 4 over 1 minus 1 eighth. 
So that is going to give me now, uh, what's that, 4 over 7 eighths. So 4 divided by 7 eighths. So we can write that now as 32 over 7. I took a quick guess as an exact fraction. So 32 over 7 gives us now that sum to infinity. So as you can see, after that big build-up, it's um, somewhat underwhelming. Um, okay, question 17. We need to evaluate the sum from r equals 1 to r equals infinity of 3 times 0 0.5 to the power of r. So what we need here is a and r. We've seen sigma notation in a previous video, so if you haven't seen that, please do check that out. So when r is 1, that's 3 times a half, which is going to be 1.5 or 3 over 2. If we consider now the ratio, the ratio is going to be 1 half as we saw in the previous videos. So with this one, straightforward, sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. So 3 over 2 over 1 minus r. So that is going to give us 3 over 2 over 1 over 2, which is going to give us 3. So that is the sum to infinity. That one was included for completeness due to the notation used. Exactly the same, nice and straightforward. Okay, let's look at the next one. Question 18, a geometric series has first term 3.15 and the sum to infinity is 14.2. Find the ratio of a series as an exact fraction. So let's just write this out. Sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. So just subbing in the values, we've got now sum to infinity, that's 14.2, is equal now to A, which is 3.15, over 1 minus R. So we need to solve for R. So I'm simply going to multiply both sides by 1 minus R and divide by 14.2. So 1 minus R is equal to 3.15 over 14.2. So we can see that 1 minus 3.15 over 14.2 will be that ratio. So let's go ahead, get a calculator to do that. So we'll do now 1 minus now 3.15, so 3.15, and then we'll divide that by 14.2, and we need this as an exact fraction, 221 over 284. So... 2, 2, 1 over 2, 8, 4, and that is the ratio. So we can see now that that is going to be less than 1, and we've gone ahead and found it. So there we go, sum to infinity. We simply now use a formula, but having some understanding it, it's, uh, that is fantastic. Some questions might uh, be slightly more challenging, but it's simply now plugging in the values that you've got to find an unknown.